Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Historic Brawl. We're gonna have a look at Anafenza the Foremost, one of the new Tarkir commanders and a commander that cares a lot about plus one plus one counters and gives you access to the Absent Colors, which is about the most important thing she actually does. Now let's have a look at how we can construct the deck around this commander. Obviously you generally want to build a lot of plus one plus one counter support. I, I don't think anybody is surprised there. So we have things like hardened scales, where actually increase the amount of plus one plus one counters you get, or in creature form, for example, winding constrictor. Now, we also generally want turn one mana dogs, because what that allows us is to play our commander on turn two, which is always a really nice thing to do. It gives us a lot of tempo and potentially allows us to develop our board further with her abilities. Now, we also got a lot of plus one plus one counter support in Tarkir. For example, the Epson Falconer. We have several of those kind of creatures who actually care about creatures having plus one plus one counters and then they give them flying or they give them first strike. Sometimes they give them menace. Other ones give them trample. So these are actually your payoff cards. It's not too effective to just have big creatures. You know, that's fine and all, but they A, get removed or B, B, they don't have any inherent evasion, so you can't close out games. That's why the Tarkir set has actually pushed this archetype to a new level, in my opinion, because you have now more synergistic pieces who actually help you close out the game. Now, one of the big advantages for being in the absent colors is that we actually get access to the very efficient and good ores of removal. For example, Anguished Unmaking, 3 mana, just exile, whatever. We also got some more specific absent cards that actually synergize very well with the commander for example the absent charm yeah and then we have other rather new cards as well from caverns of ixalan like the sovereign who also cares about plus one plus one so this overall turns out to be a really nice and solid package that has a lot of potential to just close out games quickly and a lot of synergistic pieces that when they come together feels just right yeah but let's see if they can actually come together and how the matches go our first match against Quintorius Kant, the elephant from Ixalan. Should be very interesting. I like him a lot. It's a fun commander to build around. Now, we go second, which, you know, as you know, kinda problematic, especially as a more aggressive leaning creature deck. And we don't have a mana dog. I think we mulligan here to potentially get a mana dog. Now, this is even worse. We don't have green mana. Mulligan again. And sure, we have to go down a card, which kinda sucks, but we do get a mana dog which is very important. That means we can't play our commander on turn two because we don't actually have black mana, but no worries, the magic gods are here to help us out. Just draw what you need and the game is easy. Don't get me wrong, this is still not gonna be easy. I'm very excited to see how our opponent built his deck. Lots of different ways you can go about it. Okay. That's not very nice. Now we can't really do anything. We're gonna get the Trium and are a little bit sad on the inside. But it's fine. Some games, this just happens. Lighting up the stage for three. Interesting. Bergy, Bergy's a problem next turn. Definitely don't like to see that, but we currently do not have any interaction to actually deal with this Bergy. So he might just play it and then go off next turn if we don't find anything. We also can't benefit off of our commander because we don't have another tapped creature. Now the question is do we play... Ugh, this is problematic. Do we play the Nightblade or the Tribute? Tribute ju might just straight up be too slow. Yeah, I think we're gonna play the Nightblade. Attack with our commander, opponent's definitely not going to block, and can go off this turn. Very problematic. Okay, opponent chooses to exile our commander, getting rid of Sunfall himself. Seems to be confident that we cannot flood the board, which does seem like it, because we currently don't really have that much to do. Now, Rishka. Rishka is interesting, but I do think to use our mana efficiently, it makes more sense to play our commander again. 
because we couldn't really do much. We could have played Rishka, turned him into a mana dog, and then played Inspiring Call for two, but I don't think that's uh, that's too slow. We need to put on pressure. Opponent very removal heavy. Next turn we can potentially play Tribute into Rishka. Or do the play we were just talking about. No, another land. Yeah, I think the best play would be play our mana and use Tribute into Rishka. Rishka gets two counters. And we can put another counter on him. Ha! Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how this works, but because we put the counter on Rishka before the trigger resolved, we actually drew the card, which is preferably, so I'm not actually sad about it, but I didn't quite process the right, you know, way to play it. Of course, you know, it checks whenever the counter resolves on this trigger and not when it actually goes on the stack. Sometimes I do forget this, but it worked out at the end, and we've learned something new today. Not actually new, but we got reminded of mechanics. Which is always a nice thing to do, right? So next turn we can play our commander, draw another card. Maybe we play something else and draw multiple cards. Let's see what he does. Okay, we didn't really draw anything useful. So I do think our first play should be playing our commander. Drawing a card, another land, you love to see it. And then we're just gonna pressure his Jaya, he's probably gonna block with the 1-1 creature, not gonna block with Bergy, that's fine. I fry like you for breakfast. Opponent is running a little bit low on cards, misses some land drops, which is good for us. Another 1-1. On. Opponent plays Union of the Third Path, draws a card, triggers prowess, gains some life. Not really too impactful. Intangible Virtue. Now that's interesting. Now it looks scary, but it's actually only a 2-2, so it's not very scary after all. Now we can... Okay, I think our plan is we definitely want to deal with this Jaya. But also try to hit our opponent with a card. Well, okay, if we attack, if two attack the Jaya and one the face, he's just gonna block the face and we won't draw a card. Suppose it doesn't matter. But if you only attack with one, yeah, it doesn't matter. He's gonna block the one card going for the face and we are not gonna draw an additional card, but it's fine. It's honestly fine. We can also now draw two cards. Our opponent's just not gonna block. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what we draw. Um, okay, never mind. I messed this one up. <laughs> Reading the card explains the card. Now, yeah, actually, would ha I, <laughs> God damn it, I didn't think about it. One of those would have to go face, and then we would have drawn a card. That's why I didn't block, because he was like, ah, opponent is an idiot. Yes, indeed, indeed I am. Now, let's draw two cards and see what we can get. Maybe another play. My chaos actually interesting. Let's get a planes, play my chaos for one, which then enters with two additional counters. That seems pretty good. Zolfim Mayhem Dominus can be indestructible if opponent discards two cards. Luckily for us, he currently only has one card in hand, so it doesn't actually do too much. And we are still at a healthy 16 life, so we're not on danger territory yet. An opponent definitely is on the clock. It's a quite scary board that we have, and we also have unbreakable formation to push through with even more and keep back blockers. Opponent's probably sad that he exiled his Sunfall. Certainly would have liked that this turn. Oh, discarding the Trumpeting Carnosaur to deal with our Death Touch giver. But it doesn't matter too much, because our creatures are getting strong enough to deal with everything on his board as well. Now, of course, just drawing lands <laughs> uh, is not great, but we can use Unbreakable Formation to give everything a plus one, plus one counter. And then no matter what he does, we draw an additional card, thanks to Kutzli, Kutzel, whatever, the cat, warrior. Yeah, let's do that and see what we get. 
opponent definitely needs to block one creature, otherwise he just straight up dies. Now, of course, it's kind of a non-bow with our commander, because we don't actually tap anything, so she doesn't give another counter, but Unbreakable Formation is still a really good card in this deck. It's just not very synergistic with our commander, but we do have a counter synergy and want our creatures to stay alive, so it's still pretty good. Now opponent just seems to have rage quitted and instead of conceding, he just ropes us because he closed the app or something. Please guys, if you're playing the game, just concede before closing the app. This is just annoying and wastes my time for literally no reason. Now we hit him through, opponent gave up and is dead. Yeah, pretty nice first game. We went second and our opponent had a lot of removal spells for our creatures, but we overwhelmed him at the end. He didn't have enough card advantage and closed out the game with our beaters. Our next game against Karumonix, the Red King. It's a red tribal deck, very straightforward. We definitely need some early game plays to be able to beat that. But once we get a board established, we should be... Fine. Some removal would also be nice. Thoughtseize. I don't actually care. He's gonna take heroic intervention, but they don't tend to run board clears, because why would you in a red deck? And he can only take heroic intervention, so it's fine. We did draw another land, which is actually perfect, because that allows us to play our commander right here. And yeah, that's a pretty good start. Next turn we can play Kami or Britannica Brawler. And our opponent is in quite a bit of trouble. I think we're gonna play the Kami first. So, ever since Perkins actually gonna be a 3 3, can pass, just punch through. Next turn, can play maybe the Brawler, maybe the Kodama. One plays the Red King, gets two more Reds in hand, and passes. Now, I think it makes more sense to actually play the Guardian here, because of course we could play the Brawler and the Kodama, but we don't get the ramp off of it anyway, because we have to tap both of these, and an offense is uncountered, meaning she doesn't have any counters. And yeah, next turn we can go off if we do this, I think, so should be fine. A big blocker. Gonna attack with her and put counters on Kami. Of course, the opponent is just gonna play two more reds and they're gonna be five ones, which is difficult to deal with for sure. But what we can do is just go all out. I think going all out is the right play here. Forcing our opponent to block, getting several counters in the meantime, and if he blocks, he loses a lot of his power as well. So it seems fine. Gonna choose the Guardian because that actually stays alive and it gets trampled. Opponent blocks three creatures. We still have a 7-7, seven, seven, a 5-5 five, five, and a 3-3 three, three on board. Opponent only has one red. Can it play a maximum of two reds next turn? We get lands as well, two to be precise. And yeah, we're looking really good here. Opponent needs to have a board clear, otherwise He's just dead, we have Trample, they all have one toughness, opponent sees that he's dead on board. Yeah, and that's game. Quite quick. We went first, had a really good opening, opponent was just a little bit too slow there, and we were able to overrun the red colonies before they were able to overrun us. Yeah, very nice. Alright, the next match against Organus the Dragon Slash. A commander you don't say too often, but it's quite fun to play and play against, I think. Now, yeah, we do go first, but we only have two lands, and I do think that's too risky. We do have a good two drop and we have some removal, but two lands... I know how magic works, I know how magic works. Man, okay, we go down to three. Uh, yeah, I guess we just have to take this. It's fine. I know how magic works. If I start with a two lander, then I'm never gonna draw the actual third land and, you know, so I don't even have to try. Ragavan, that's problematic, but we do have a blocker in Botanical Brawler. And I'm definitely gonna sacrifice it for the Ragavan. Now if our opponent has removal, then we might as well just give up, I suppose. Boots of Speed. 
Okay, that's fine. Still got a block. Attack, you coward. Attack! Come on, I want this monkey of the board. I'm not gonna block. <laughs> God damn it. I wish he would have attacked. Now we can just play our commander. And we have an actual blocker. But we're not gonna attack. We're not gonna attack. Because if he removes one of them, I still want to be able to block his monkey. Yep, that's what I thought. Definitely want it in my command zone. And we get Ozolith. It's definitely not great. We could have hit something really good here, but we didn't. Now this turn, we're just gonna play the Dean. So if he removes our Botanical Brawler, we at least get a card out of it. Rising of the day. It's fine. Another land. Now we're gonna play our commander again and then use the Dean on our opponent's end step to give a plus one plus one counter to the foremost, which also buffs our botanical brawler. And this is gonna give us some value eventually. So our opponent is required to attack us to generate value. So if we just have large enough blockers and enough of them, we should be fine. Arrow. Okay, opponent is ramping, but he is getting kind of low on cards, so it should be fine. And we're gonna start to pop off at the end of the turn. Okay, can't be blocked. Now, gonna put a counter on here, which in turn also buffs our brawler. My turn. Now what we can do now is play our battle priest. We can activate the Dean of Shadow with a counter on the battle priest. Buffs of Brawler. Then we're gonna attack the commander. Put a count on here, which buffs our Brawler. And we gain the life. Yeah, we might as well play the Gilded Goose. Have a potential flyer that we can put on Countess. Opponent plays Agnes. We do have one very large blocker and a semi large blocker. Opponent is just gonna trade here for the two treasures. Not sure why, because we also gain 13 life. We're on 39 now, which is pretty comfortable. And opponent concedes. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, very nice. We were able to keep our opponent from hitting with his monkey and just accumulate value with our plus one plus one counters. So our creatures get big enough that our opponent just can't attack anymore. And yeah, his deck falls apart. Very nice. Cool showcase. We got a little bit lucky here. So yeah, that's always fun. I found this deck to be very interesting because it's actually a lot more high rolly than I would have expected because there are so many synergistic pieces in this deck that if you don't draw any of your payoff cards, you actually don't do much. Yes, you have big creatures, but if they get removed or don't have any evasion, you can't actually close out games and you're just sitting there drawing land after land or a creature that doesn't really do much on its own, then yeah, you kind of have a problem. And the reason for that is that your commander, well, she doesn't actually do much by herself. It's a it's a 4-4. And if you don't have any other creatures, that's just about as much as she does. It's a 4-4 commander. And let me tell you, in the mid to late game, that's not gonna cut it. So you don't have that perpetual commander that might be able to win you the game if you just keep drawing lands. Well, at least you can play your commander. That's not really the case here. So this leads to the case that if you don't draw the right pieces or if you draw badly, your commander isn't really bailing you out. So the most important important thing about this commander compared to let's say Falco Sparrow Pact Weaver which is a banned commander this commander actually gives you access to Abzan which in my opinion is a lot better especially because you get access to all the ores of removal which is great and we got some specific plus one plus one counter synergies who are in Absent or care about the Absent color. So while I think that Falco Spera is a better commander compared to Anafenza, the deck itself is actually better in the Absent colors compared to Band. So I do still think this deck comes out ahead slightly, but like I said, it's a little bit more polarized because if you don't draw the right cards, not at the right time, well, you're not doing much and you're gonna be kind of sad. Other than that, you can have ridiculous explosive starts with this deck, really to killing your opponent on like turn four or five, which is a lot of fun. So this is kind of on the other side of the coin. You have to decide if you want this or not. But generally speaking, it's still a very fun deck to play, a fun commander to play if it actually comes together. Another aspect about this is 
Yes, some of you may have noticed that this commander exiles your opponent's creatures if they die. So you might ask yourself, okay, why are you running so much exile removal like Vanishing Verse or D-Spark if destroy removal would be enough to exile the creatures anyway? Isn't this kind of a non-bow? And yes, you are right, this is kind of a non-bow. But I am gonna make the argument that I still prefer to run it like this for two reasons, basically. Number one, and that's kind of a minor thing, but it does come up fairly often nowadays. Days, I think, is that destroy removal still doesn't kill indestructible creatures. So, you know, okay, it would be exiled if it can actually die, but it can't actually die. So, yeah, you're just sitting pretty right here. But the other more important point, in my opinion, is that cards like Anguished Unmating or Legions to Ashes hit everything. The two mana destroy removal almost always just hits creatures and or planeswalkers. So you're kind of limited there. The Ors of Removal actually allows you to be very very flexible and hit multiple different things. At, at least cards like Anguish are making Legion to Ashes. Of course, cards like Despark and Vanishing Wars have also very restrictive targeting abilities, but I do think they generally come out ahead. But that is a change you could make in this deck if you decided to go that route. And it might be better. I just prefer it like this. Yeah, but overall, I really hope you enjoyed today's video, enjoyed the matches, and if you liked it, leave a like. It helps a lot. If you want to see more, subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.